So hello, everyone. I'm going to talk about compiler plugins. It's not widely known and never used feature. <laughs> uh, I thought that for the status, uh, I might enlighten you on a compilation process in hex. Maybe not all of you know how how it goes. So in the in the beginning, you have hex source code. Uh, you write it carefully, hopefully without an errors, without errors, and then start a compilation, uh, a successful compilation. Uh, and then you sit back and relax while Hex uh, compiles your software. Uh, now I'll, uh, I'll go into the details about this process. Uh, first, uh, parsing happens. It builds uh, an abstract syntax tree of your code. Uh, this syntax tree has no information about types. Uh, then this AST goes to the typer and passes typing process and then uh, the type it abstract syntax tree is produced which goes to the optimizer and then that optimizer produces another type of syntax tree which goes di directly to generators which uh, emits uh, target code or binary uh, which you was which you wanted to execute uh, in this in the in uh, this whole process, you can only influence uh, the source code. So after you uh, started compilation, you can do nothing except uh, macros. <laughs> these are orange things because th these are things you can uh, affect somehow, uh, unlike other parts which goes completely automatic without your uh, without any your action. So macros can get abstract syntax tree without type information and produce another abstract syntax tree and pass it to the typer. Uh, this is the only way to affect uh, compilation. Uh, macros can cannot produce any type of syntax tree. It, they cannot uh, modify type of syntax tree. Uh, they can only read typed syntax tree at some stages and produce more untyped syntax tree. They ca macros can get uh, type information uh, after typer or after optimizer. Uh, so macros are great. You can do wonderful things and uh, you can uh, break uh, the compiler with macros. Uh, now what they can do with abstract syntax tree is um, almost anything. You can uh, analyze it, you can uh, transform it. Oh, that's a delay. Yeah, I forgot about delay. Uh, you can transform abstract, abstract syntax tree. Also, you can uh, generate a new syntax tree uh, based on some conditions. Uh, also, you can handle type of syntax tree, but only to analyze it. So you can, like, build static analyzer with a macro, which will um, make some warnings about uh, bad code practices or something like that. Uh, but uh, macros are not so great when you have a lot of them. In your project, then you start to get pain when compiling your project for five minutes or more. Uh, so the problem with macros at some point uh, may be uh, performance. Uh, currently, in hex four, macros are like up to five times faster than in hex three. Thanks, Simon. Uh, but still, they have to be compiled on each compilation, on each compiler run. Uh, that takes some time, and they are slower than the rest of the compiler. It's like the slowest part of the compiler. Uh, and uh, the maybe the worst thing is that uh, compiler has to 
encode and decode all the data passed to and from macros and that takes a lot of time and a lot of allocations so it hits performance even more um, I worked on a project where out of uh, one minute compilation uh, macros took like uh, 20 to 30 seconds to execute that's, <laughs> that's for one minute project <laughs> like it's 50 percent of compilation time sometimes uh, so about the behavior of macros it's uh, is that if you try to type something in, in a macro i mean if you type try to load a type or uh, request a, a compiler to type an expression you can basically <coughs> explode the compilation uh, if you have uh, some circular uh, circular references uh, cir circular dependencies amongst your types so if uh, type A depends on type B and type B uses type A at some point and then you start to type these things in a macro compiler may go into an infinite loop or or just return you uh, a type B to you without any fields or something <coughs> like that uh, hopefully we fix it uh, most of such situation but there's still some of them left in hex4 uh, also, as I mentioned, you cannot affect uh, type at syntax tree in uh, the macros. And that's uh, what you would want to do if you're uh, implementing, for example, uh, coroutines or, uh, or maybe if you want to uh, implement a tail call optimization in macros it will be much harder for you because you have to re-implement uh, parts of the compiler in macro in macros to get uh, uh, sufficient information about the syntax tree uh, and there's that's where plugins come to rescue uh, plugins already uh, can do everything um, uh, macros can do uh, they can analyze uh, and type it abstract syntax tree, they can uh, uh, transform it, uh, whatever they want, uh, they can generate new syntax tree, but also they can uh, work with type at syntax tree, uh, analyze, uh, transform and generate new type at syntax tree at, at uh, almost any stage of the compilation. So let's... Uh, Ah, yeah. Uh, also, plugins are much more performant than macros. Uh, you don't need to compile plugin on each uh, compiler run. You just uh, compile plugin one time and then use that compiled binary uh, every on every compilation. Uh, and they run at full native speed as fast as other parts of the compiler. Uh, and they don't need compiler to encode or decode uh, abstract syntax tree most of the time most of the time because uh, plugins still have to be executed from macros and that's when you may want to pass abstract syntax tree to a macro or back from macro but if you not don't need to pass uh, nodes to and from macro then you're fine uh, but uh, in uh, terms of the uh, plugins behavior you can uh, uh, unlike macros you can check uh, which types are already built typed uh, are, are ready to be used in macros or in plugins without uh, the need to actually request compiler to type these things uh, as i said you can modify type it uh, abstract syntax tree also, you don't have to re-implement parts of the compiler because you can access almost any any functions uh, present in the OCaml code in the compiler. You can access them in plugins. Now, get back. Let's get back to the compilation. Uh, now you can not only modify abstract syntax tree without types, you can also do that at uh, all the stages of compilation. After typing before optimization, 
or after optimization before generating the target code. Uh, this allows a lot of uh, great things. I'll uh, mention them later, what the possibilities or use cases you can do with that. Uh, but also plugins have da downsides, some cons. So you have to write them in OCaml. Uh, but the good thing, OCaml is uh, quite a safe language, so it's uh, impossible to get a hard crush. Uh, almost impossible, you can do it if you want. Uh, there, there are no null references and such things, so usually if you write something and it compiles, it usually works, uh, unless you have uh, issues in the, in the business logic. Uh, also, there, there is no reification like we have uh, in macros. We have macro reification when you can type a macro keyword and then type whatever expressions in hex and they are, uh, get automatically automatically converted to hex.macro.expr uh, type in uh, plugins you don't have such thing uh, you have to manually construct syntax tree using uh, uh, enum constructors just like uh, old school macros you could use the puzzle uh, but that's again, uh, you have to spend uh, compilation time on that. True. Also, no type checking for manually created uh, type of Apsos syntax tree. Uh, Hex compiler can uh, uh, type check your abstract syntax tree when he is typing it. But when you produce already type of syntax tree, Typer is not involved, so you have to be careful about uh, constructing type of object syntax tree. You can uh, even construct a thing like assign uh, an object to a uh, number variable. You can construct it and pass it to generator, and depending on the target, it may be even generated and then crash at runtime. So be careful. Um, Another thing is that plugins uh, need the development environment for the compiler. So basically, if you want to develop a plugin, you first need to set up a hex development environment. That means if you're on Windows, you have some issues. Uh, yeah, however, I almost I've installed uh, OCaml development environment uh, on Windows yesterday, almost without issues. It was only one issue. What is your secret? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So it's definitely possible. Our uh, people in our compiler team do that all the time. So uh, also another thing, which is probably the most bad thing out of these is that uh, a plugin to run is need a compiler which was built in exactly the same environment as a plugin otherwise uh, uh, compiler won't be able to load the plugin um, now I want to go into details about this uh, the same environment uh, thing uh, what does it mean is that uh, when developing, uh, when compiling a plugin, you need to, your OCaml libraries to be the same versions that were used to build the compiler binary. Also, you need the same OCaml version, and uh, you need to use the same hex commit. Uh, I mean, you need to commit your plugin against. Uh, you need to compile your plugin against the same commit of hex. Uh, which will be used to load that plugin. Um, maybe something else should be the same. I didn't figure it out yet, um, but I'm on a road to it. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll be able to set up uh, some tool to automatically restore the environment for building plugins for major hex versions for official releases. <clears throat> So there's no sense to release pre-built plugins on Hexlib because no one will be able to run it until they have uh, the compiler uh, binary you've built yourself. Uh, 
but that's probably will going to change is going to change uh, I think there is there is a way to to produce uh, plugins uh, compatible with off the official release I'm still about to investigate it so to the bright side of plugins they are blazing fast like to compare here is an example uh, this example just iterates through all the classes and all the fields of the classes of classes in a project. Uh, here I took the test suite of the compiler, uh, and it took a macro to like 50 or 60 milliseconds to iterate through all the fields. But then I've built a plugin which does the same thing. Uh, here's how it look in OCaml, almost the same code except it's OCaml uh, and it took like 0 to 1 millisecond to do the, the same thing so for this operation plugins are like uh, five, uh, 50 or 60 times faster than macros yes almost infinitely so the use cases uh, plugins are very great as a first step to learn OCaml and the compiler internals because you have to to be able to develop a plugin <laughs> uh, also you don't when you're building a plugin you don't have to mess with the compiler you don't have to change anything in the compiler so you just stick to your small local code base uh, and don't care about uh, about breaking something in the compiler uh, as I said uh, um, Plugins are very, very, very fast compared to macros, so it may improve the compilation speed of your project uh, dramatically if you rely on macro, uh, if you have a lot of macros in your project. Um, another thing, you can build uh, a complete custom target generator with plugin without the need to merge it uh, into the compiler. So again, you don't, you won't be you won't need to like merge the changes of the compiler into your fork of hex. It don't won't be won't need to resolve uh, conflicts and all the stuff. You you have you just have a separate project for your target genera generator. Uh, <clears throat> currently, people I I know like Vadim Djachenko, I think his name he works uh, on a generator for uh, game game maker yeah yeah, I think so. yeah and he 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 created it in macros uh, and had some issues with with that because uh, because uh, because of uh, performance because of null pointers and stuff like that uh, <clears throat> Also, plugins can be used to build fast tools for code analysis, just like uh, null safety feature uh, now merged in the compiler. Initially, it was created as a plugin, and it allowed to analyze whole code base of any any project quite fast, without penalizing the compilation performance. Uh, you can also perform some project specific optimizations uh, with plugins if you know you're you're using some things which uh, can be optimized for your case but cannot be optimized in general case so it makes no sense to add it to the compiler you still have an option to to make a plugin and optimize your project even more uh, and uh, it can be used as a sandbox for new compiler features as an example for project specific optimization i want to mention uh, an issue which was brought by i don't remember who uh, <laughs> but here's a link for that issue uh, and the guy said that he has a lot of matrices multiplication and after compilation in javascript it looks like this so there's a lot of uh, multiply by zero going on and he asked us to introduce such an optimization in uh, the compiler to make it to eliminate uh, such uh, unnecessary multiplications because it's obviously for him it will it will be zero as a result but uh, compiler cannot rely on such assumptions because 
these uh, variables like a12, a13, they could be uh, not a number, which is not zero when multiplied on, on zero. So you can build a plugin which, so is, if you know your variables will never be not a number, you can build a plugin which optimizes that even more and produces these simplified output. <coughs> As an example for a sandbox for compil compiler features is a null safety, as I mentioned. Uh, it's already merged in the compiler. So initially it was built as a plugin, now it's in the compiler. Uh, also, you can imagine a coroutines implemented as, a as the plugin uh, that already was implemented. I built a plugin located here. Uh, unfortunately, it's uh, uh, far outdated uh, now. I just built it to, to get a better understanding of coroutines and what it will take uh, to implement them in the compiler. Uh, also, they are not to be merged. The, these concrete, uh, these, these my plugin is not to be merged in the compiler because the implementation is far from, from what we want to implement in the compiler. Uh, now let's, uh, do I have time? Time? Sometime? Yeah, 50 more minutes. Do we want to implement uh, some plugin, maybe? Uh, Any ideas? Any ideas? Maybe some optimizations? We can implement this uh, multiply by zero. Mm, that's boring. <laughs> so, yeah. Then let's do something with explosions. Explosions? Well, let's Arsenal. let's Arsenal. go for. You don't need plugins for the generation. Let's go for <laughs> tail recursion, maybe. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so, what do you need to create a new plugin? Currently. I am going to talk about Hex development uh, branch because uh, plugins in the 4.0 release are in quite an old state and we kind of reworked them uh, after we, we, we made a branch for, for the release. So you have to go with development branch of Hex for now. Um, now, uh, open tech. I'll make this bigger, so it better to see, easier to see. You go to it's a hex repo, clone it to my local hard drive. We go to plugins. There is an example plugin. You just copy paste it, rename it to whatever you want, like tail co optimizations and then inside of copy pasted code you just replace every every example word with your plugin name let's do this tco tco whoop tco uh read me we don't need read me who need read me no read me uh This code, it's a camel build system. Oh. Yeah, you, but uh, for plugin, you don't need to learn it, you just need to replace example with the TCO. <laughs> <laughs> so, our hex part of the plugin will be called TCO2. Yeah, and inside, it's not a, an example anymore. And it will have a one method to register our plugin in the compiler. It will be like wait, wait. Okay. We will also need an init macro to load the plugin. Oh right, it's it's a function, it's not a variable. Okay. Now our plugin will look like this. Now that was the hard part. Now to the easy part. We need to implement it in the OCaml. 
There is an example plug plugin implemented already. We will wipe it. Whoop. And that I just happen to have uh, an OCaml code for such a plugin we need. <laughs> it's just Oops. mystery. <laughs> That's easy. That was easy. You see? <laughs> Plugins is easy. Uh, now you need to build. Uh, uh, let's assume you already have a compiler built. Let's just make sure it is. Now you need to build a plugin itself. You just type make plugin. Now big plugin equals our plugin name is DCO. Table call optimization. Okay, go for it. Yes, it's being built. And now I just happen to have a test project for such a plugin. <laughs> Um, we don't need side panel. It's a Fibonacci modified to be um, tail recursive. So without a plugin, we can build this project. And run it in node. And it takes some time. Let's see how much time it takes. It takes almost three seconds to execute because we calculate 5,000th Fibonacci number for 65,000 times. You may need it in, in a real world. Uh, so the JavaScript generated without the plugin looks like this. As you can see, there is a recursive call and Node.js doesn't, optim doesn't optimize it judging on the execution time. Now we set up a, a plugin as a Huxleap, Huxleap dev. Mm, it's called TCO and it's located here. Yep, yep. Now we build with our plugin. Nope. Oh, that's because our plugin also need an extra params HX, HXML. Extra params, no, not this, what's this? That's not that. So we, we need to actually run our plugin. Macro, um, DCO, init. I think it's in it. Yes. So now we go and compile with with the plugin and the recursive call is gone. It's not here anymore. Instead we got a while loop and a continue instead of a recursive return. Mm -hmm. And how much time does it take to run this project now? It's uh, 300 milliseconds. It's like almost 10 times faster. Yeah, plugins are great. <laughs> now we have a tail recursive uh, elimination plugin. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> are there plans to include it in the compiler? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a quite a naive implementation. Of, uh, it's just, uh, let's take a look. It's just like uh, 15 lines Oh, 50 lines of code. Um, but it's 50 lines of OCaml code. Oh, it's 80 lines, including different uh, uh, code to actually plug it into the compiler. So the implementation is uh, about about 40 lines. So I guess there are some edge cases need to, to be considered and fix it. But for Fibonacci, it works. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> we can let users to find bugs. So, any questions? No? Oh, that's great. Thank you. Can you check the release? Release? Oh, yeah, we have a release now. <laughs> and now, no. Yes, Hex4 is officially released, and you can download it on the hex.org download. Page. Uh. <laughs>
yeah. but it it's it's still more. coming <laughs> it's still coming that's because i still didn't download it maybe, maybe. <laughs> thank you thank you